Hi, I'm Katie, Flower Mama, and it is a chilly, brisk morning here in Davis, California. I am excited to teach you how to make a dried flower wreath today. So these dried flower wreaths are perfect for fall, perfect to um, make as gifts or to sell. And what you need is some rustic oasis wire. That is the stuff, I, I'm gonna use this roll up, but I left the tag on so you can see Oasis makes this. And Oasis also makes this stuff called bind wire. These are essentially um, just regular wire that's kind of wrapped in this softer material and it's a lot nicer to work with with the dried florals. You'll need some floral adhesive. This is um, floral glue also made by Oasis. Uh, but you could use hot glue as well. You'll need your wire cutters and a snippers and then a whole load of dried flowers. So here in this bucket we've got some fun things, things that I've been saving and drying all year. <clears throat> we have status, this white stuff, um, and then German status is also called misty um, at the wholesalers but it's this nice little purple stuff. This is Atriplex or Auroch. We've got broom corn, straw flower, peacock feathers if you want to get real fancy, but I probably won't use those today. Um, another kind of status here, this is called a Mobium, these cute little white flowers, and this is some dried tansy, bunny tails, celosia. I tried drying nine bark this year to see how it does. It's a little bit brittle, but um, I think nine bark will work okay. And then in here we've got some gomprina and nigella pods. So I think that's everything in my bucket. Um, there are other things you can use too as well for your wreaths, and um, I'll be getting you a list of all these different dried flowers that you can work with. So. How I like to start, um, first we're gonna prepare our form. So we're doing something kind of like this, um, and I'll show you. I unravel this to be, let's see, I make a little test plot. So that looks pretty good to me, like a standard like 12 to 14 inch wreath. Um, and then I'm gonna take that and like double what I was doing. And you want to use your wire cutters on these things um, so you don't ruin your snippers over time. And then I go ahead and make it the size that I want starting out. That looks pretty good to me. And then I just wrap this around one more time. And this is this second wrapping, it's kind of just reinforcement. It's going to make um, your base a little bit sturdier. That is that and that is ready to design on. I also like um, using these wreath forms instead of the wire ones like this um, for the dried flowers because this is a little bit more um, like kind of harsh and abrasive like it's easier to break flowers. Um, this is a lot more bendy and flexible and just allows a lot more room for designing rather than this. But if you had to, you could use this for dried flowers as well. Um, I just prefer this material uh, for the same reason that um, paddle wire, um, I'm s instead using this Oasis bind wire because it is softer and more flexible. If I use this paddle wire on the dried flowers it would um, break the stems it's a little bit harsh and abrasive so we're gonna save this for a different wreath and use our bind wire and so then here I want to cut some pieces and have them ready um, maybe an arm a couple arms lengths of pieces and I'm just gonna set those to the side so they'll be ready for me when I want to use them so now you've got your base and your wire set up and it's time to prep the flowers. So here I'm gonna be using status mainly. Let's see, and they might all wanna fall out in their bucket. Um, this status is great for 
um, for dried flower work because it um, fills up quite a bit. And so I'm preparing the stems by cutting them in these, like leaving these little pieces, maybe four to five inch pieces like that. Um, I'm not leaving a ton of stem length on them. And this is so that I can just pick up the pieces and start designing without worrying about clipping each stem each time. So I'm just preparing myself to continually work on this wreath without having to stop and clip every time. You know, I actually have some more status in the shed that I want to get. So pause for one second. <laughs> I just realized. Okay, I'm back. I got um, quite a few more bunches of status because I knew I had more um, and that this one bunch here and some wasn't going to cut it. Um, I think you want to aim to have at least five to eight bunches like this of um, some good filler flowers. So status works well. Um, dried hydrangea also works well. And I'm going to take a few of these bunches out to be on the table. I like how these were bunched. Um, all of the flowers are right here at the top. So for this bunch, I can literally just clip the whole thing like that. Save us some time. Now I'm going to go for this stuff. This is the German status, the Misty. I like this texture in here. And that's the thing, dried flower wreaths are all about the texture. And I usually like to try and think about what the wreath is gonna look like before I make it um, in terms of color and various types. And so for here, we've already got the purple and the white. And now this is kind of a reddish bronze color. And so I'm gonna hold up a few things and see if I like the way that that looks with what else I've got. I think this hot pink gomfrina is too bright for what I'm working with. We already have some brightness from the purple. I don't want it to compete. This looks good to me, This, these nigella pods. It's kind of a cross between this bronzy red and the purple. So I'm going to set this aside. This is what I'm going to be putting on last, actually, and I'll show you that. Um, this could work. It feels a little bit bright compared to this um, and a little bit clashy, but if I had to use that, I would. These broom corns um, are really fun. I could leave them kind of big like this, how their head is or I could break them apart like this one. I actually just broke off some of the pieces from like a really big head. So now I've prepped all my piles and we're essentially ready to get started. I like to just kind of clear and I'll probably do this throughout um, making the wreath. I like to keep my space somewhat as clean as possible um, to really see the wreath taking form. So now you'll grab your bind wire and I always like to start with my like kind of bigger filler, fluffier materials. So I'm gonna put a couple pieces of status um, like so. It's almost like I'm arranging um, a mini bouquet in my hand, like a mini little bunch like so. And I'm gonna place it um, just anywhere here um, right on it and so I'm holding the bunch as well as um, this piece in between my fingers and I've got my bind wire I'm making a little tail like this it's just a um, piece that angles out and I'm putting that the same direction as the stems and holding that as well with my thumb and then I'm gonna take this and wrap it around, pulling this bind wire through the wreath. Wrap it around a few times. And this 
this is your starting point so it's important to wrap a few good times and you'll see as I go along I'll, I'll be explaining that you're not going to want to pull too tight on this because you'll snap um, your flower stems because you know remember they're dried and so they're fragile and you're probably going to be breaking some as you work and that is okay it is expected um, so now at this point I'm going to come on with more flower stems and I want to overlap them with what I have here and as I'm looking this I already see like a little gap right there so um, I know I'm going to want to fill that and so I'm putting Misty there and then I'll come do this and then I'll give it another wrap and you see now I took a, a little cluster of stems and I put them way out here to the side um, you'll see as I'm working and I'll explain this a few times that you want to create like this um, fan like you want to think of putting stems on the outside as well as on the inside or in the middle and on the inside and so I like to think of the palm of my hand like this going down as I create and so you can see I'm always see that one popped off I'm always holding um, the frame and having my thumb on the dried flowers themselves and so I like to work by adding flowers one at a time and then using my thumb to hold them until I feel like that's good and I give it a wrap. Um, I wrap maybe three, two to four stems um, at a time and then I only do like one or two wraps because um, again I'm not trying to pull them too tight. And now I'm going to come with um, some of this material here, some of these fun textures. And you should allow yourself to be slow with the process um, and really work step by step. You don't have to rush through this. So as you can see, I'm picking up some pieces and trying them there. And if I don't like it, I put them down and pick up a different piece. So this is where your artistry comes in. And as these stems get a little bit long here, you can go ahead and trim them. So you can see I'm using this broom corn mainly on the outside of the arrangement, um, the wreath. I feel like it's going to give it some nice um, width. It's going to look a little bit bigger with these hanging out of the edges. And I'm really liking the texture of this um, misty stuff there. You'll see that as I'm working, sometimes my stems want to um, go out to the edges of the wreath. And I kind of just work on continually bringing them back um, because I want to maintain the face of the wreath. This is the first dried flower wreath I've made of this season so far. Um, takes a little bit more time with your first one of the season to kind of get back into it. And you'll see that almost every other bunch I put on I'm adding one of these broom corns. Um, it's because I'm trying to maintain some consistency here. And now when, when I'm looking at this, this looks nice and full, full, full. And so this bunch that I just added, it's primarily in the center and a little bit on the sides. And so I definitely, I'll move my hand, I definitely need to add something in here um, to fill this gap. So um, as I'm working, like what's going through my mind every time is, um, am I getting enough on the inside as well as the other places? And I will tell you that when making the dried flower wreaths, um, because your bunches want to tend to like move on you towards the outside of your form, it is extra important to like put some focus on filling that inside. Because um, essentially when it's hanging, you don't really want to see this form. So I'm taking some flowers here and making sure to really get them on the inside. I'll use a piece that's a little bit longer, like that, to 
make sure that's filled up. All right, now at this point, um, I only have about this much left of my bind wire, and so I'm going to close it off and start a new piece. And by closing it off, I really just make sure to wrap around kind of tight and actually loosen it first, and then I, I slide this underneath um, what I just wrapped and give it a pull. So I'm not actually making any kind of knot. I'm just um, wrapping it around, looping under, and pulling. Looks like I caught on something. So I might do that a couple times. And if you want, you can clip the tail a little bit, but um, I leave some of it on, and I just bend it over down towards the stem. And then I pick up my new piece. And we're gonna start <clears throat> the same exact way as um, by making that little tail like that. And I'm gonna get a bunch in my hands ready to put on there. And so I haven't mentioned this yet, but um, as you can see, I'm keeping all the flowers the same way. All of the stems are pointed down. Um, this entire time I'm arranging, I'm not taking flowers like this and putting it, um, oops. See, it's hard to do it even the wrong way. I'm not taking flower stems like this and trying to put it on this way um, because you would just run into trouble trying to do that. The best way to cover up um, the stems is to continue working um, on the same, in the same fashion as you've started. So as you're getting to the end, the main kind of trouble you're going to run into is that your stems are going to start banging into your starting point. So we're not quite there yet, but as we get there, I'm going to make sure that um, the flowers I lay down um, have really short stems um, so that they're not really getting in the way. This long stem here, I'm going to cut right there. So then I have two good usable pieces. And so right now my stems have been mostly um, sticking out to the edges and I'm going to try and bring them in a little bit and tuck them underneath um, what I had started with. I'm going to take these and this is always the hardest part of making your wreath is this uh, finishing part. So that stems a little bit long but and as you can see, it's totally okay to set your work down um, and let go of it because you've been pulling um, these dried flowers pretty tightly as you've been working. So they're not going to fall apart if you set it down. I need to grab some more pieces. So you can see I'm kind of taking these tails and tucking them under the first part and letting them just kind of sit there for a minute. I'm essentially finishing it the same way that I was when I'd come to an end of my string. So I've got my piece here and I leave this kind of loose and I'll go through it like that. And I'm going to call that good. I'm going to set it down very gently and just finish off that little tail. Um, so I'm going to take this and Let's see, I want to find like one of the nearest loops and it looks like this is closest. So I'm going to loop through these two. And this just makes it a little extra more secure. I'm going to loop through it again. And so for this step, um, you finish the base of your wreath and now you're ready to see where you have gaps um, and where things may not be as full and kind of add in some interesting elements. Um, and I'll hold this up so you can kind of see. Um, what I'm seeing is there's a gap right here where there's no broom corn. So I know I want to stick some broom corn in there. Um, it looks a little bit bare right here in the center to me so I'm gonna want to fill in this part a little bit 
And that's about it, really. I, I mean, I've been making these for quite a number of years, so um, I usually don't have too many gaps to fill in when I'm done. Um, but if you do, it's okay. That's what this gluing step is for. And so you want to have the same materials you worked with to fill in some of the gaps. You know, so another question like I may get is that um, can I just stick stems underneath the wrapping that you did? Um, and you certainly can if it's something with a really thin stem like this that you could easily slide under. I mean, chances are you've pulled this pretty tight. Um, like as you were supposed to, so it might be hard, but you could slide a little stem underneath like that, certainly, and it holds in place. Um, this stem is a bit too fat, too thick, to really slide under there, so um, it needs the glue. All right, and that'll continue um, to dry. So I'm gonna flip this over and work on my other section, which was right here that needed a little bit more filling in. And for that, I want to do something that's going to take up enough space, like this atriplex. See how that kind of just fills in right there? And so I'm always kind of like seeing where I want these things before I glue them. I think I've filled in so far the major gaps, so I'm pretty happy with that so far. And now I want to put on some of this really awesome nigella. The reason I didn't um, work with this and wrap it in is because um, I only have a little bit of it and I want to make sure I stick it in these exact perfect places. Um, so this is what um, I like to do at the end and glue on these like extra really beautiful pieces in there. Um, also um, instead of nigella other really good things to use are straw flour straw flour and gomfrina. Um, straw flour is hard to work with um, wrapping it. Um, the stems are just really like the heads I think are just too big for the tiniest stems and so these tend to snap off really easily as you're wrapping. So straw flour is one I almost always um, just use the heads afterwards and I'll pick off the heads here like this right off their stems and I'll do a nice generous amount of glue here and find places where I think they look good and glue them in like that. And this actually doesn't look too bad here, the straw flower. I thought it'd be a little bit too bright, but it's kind of pretty. And so I would find places for that straw flower and poke them in. Um, but I might not use them this time. I want to stick with the nigella and see how far I get with that first. And so for this stage, I like to kind of place them all on first where they're going to go. And since these are sitting on top, it's okay if their stems are not going the same direction um, because you're really just aiming to glue them right on top. I'm leaving a little bit of their stem on um, as a because these nigella, as you can see, they have a lot of the like kind of fluff, these textural leaves up by their pods. Um, and if I were to cut it right down here, it would be hard to get the glue up in here. So instead what I'm doing, because I want to leave all of this, it's beautiful texture, um, is I'm leaving a little bit of the stem to glue the stem and then slide the stem in. That's my plan there. Whereas um, like the gomfrina here or the straw flower, I would clip off all the stems and just place glue here and like hold it down. 
for a little bit wherever I decided to put them. All right, I'm gonna start gluing some of these and my glue got a little unruly while I was working on that, so I'm using my cloth to wipe it. Um, and again, if you're doing hot glue, um, just making sure you have a space like a piece of cardboard or paper to catch the hot glue when you're working. Um, and this stuff I also will add stinks quite a bit. Um, it's got a strong odor and so it's helpful to do this kind of work outside with the glue. Right, so now everything should be dry and ready for your wire on the back for hanging it. So now this is the part where you get to pick it up and decide what is the top and what is the bottom. And you know, as it was on the table and I was working on it, I kind of assumed that was the top and so I might just like that to be the top. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with that. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll make this the top. So it'll be like this, but you can see, you can turn it and kind of decide, you know, what looks better being the top versus the bottom. And some pieces. All right. And then you flip it over um, very carefully. And I'm gonna use this paddle wire. You could use the Oasis wire, but um, for hanging, this is a little bit more sturdy. Um, so I'm gonna get a piece about like so. And now I'm going to, um, again, with the little tail, kind of make a tail to loop through some of what I had done with the wrapping and pull. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. This is gonna be kind of like close to the base and where the stems are. And I'm going to wrap this around. And this just gives that extra reinforcement um, so that it's a little bit stronger while it's hanging. Generally with the dried flower wreaths, I suggest hanging them on your wall um, in your home um, as opposed to the door because they are made of dried flowers. And so if you think of this door slamming open and shut all the time, you will um, experience some breakage. It's a little bit fragile. So you wanna have it, um, I always suggest finding a nice spot indoors. Um, it's kind of some wall decor to hang it. Um, these should last for well over a year. Um, dried flower wreaths um, last a really long time. I don't spray them with anything. Um, I know there are probably products out there where you can. Um, I, I just don't recommend it. I don't spray them. It's not needed. Um, there will be some fading of the colors over time, but essentially, um, this makes a really long lasting kind of forever gift. Now I wanna talk about pricing with you for a little bit. Um, if you're looking to sell these, um, it's important to know what to price them as. And so dried flowers um, per bunch, um, you buy them just like you would fresh flowers and they're often the same price, sometimes more per bunch. Um, and then, you, so you figure out how many bunches you needed to use to make this wreath, and then you have to um, price up um, to, in order to make a profit. So we used about three bunches of status. Um, at $8 a bunch of status, that'd be $24 wholesale for the status. Um, this misty status stuff um, is about one bunch and I'm also, again, gonna say like $8 a bunch. It's kind of just standard across the board to keep things simple here. So um, $8 for the Misty, and then let's see, the Atropeplex, the Auroch. A little note here. We used um, probably three stems of that, um, and at 80 cents of stem, that's $2.40 um, $2 for the Atropeplex. The Nigella, we probably used like three stems, Mine was kind of branching, so um, estimated three stems, another $2.40. And the broom corn, um, probably about five stems there, three or five stems. And broom corn can go for like $1.50 a stem, sometimes $2 a stem. Um, so we'll say that's $7.50. 
Um, anyways, that's that's wholesale. That's like what I paid um, to make it. Not actually including the wire um, or the glue or all these other materials yet. So just for the flowers, um, it comes to about $44. $44 for my cost to make and and so in order to make money um, you need to you need to price up and so um, if you times two that's $88 um, so at least $88 this wreath needs to be in order for you to turn a profit um, a lot of designers will do um, times three because um, you have to include your design time and even times four sometimes because you include the other materials, your design time, your labor, your artistry. Um, and so if you times it by three, that's $132. Um, and so we won't even go up to as much as four, but you can see like these get um, pretty pricey um, and like you need to price them for what they're worth in order to compensate for the materials and your time. So, um, you know, upcharging it by like two or three, $88 to $132 um, is a good range. I personally would price this at $95. That might seem low to some other people. Um, a lot of the flowers I grow myself, but again, you gotta pay yourself for the time to grow the flowers to hang and dry them, all that good stuff. Um, I feel comfortable charging 95 for this. I still turn a profit for that, and it feels um, like something that um, is doable for the customer, too. But you gotta think that's a pretty good price for something that is going to last forever. <laughs>